I'm Bart Matthews, your public defender. The public defender's salary is paid for by the community, and he is charged with the responsibility of giving legal aid free of charge to any person who seeks and needs it. It is the public defender's sworn duty to defend the public accused of crime until they are proved guilty in a court of law. Now from the files of the public defender, we bring you the case we call Behind Bars. One of those sudden hard splain accidents, Mr. Matthews. A flash explosion in one of the boilers turned the place into a sea of escaping steam and flying metal. Is that where this Mrs. Smith was hurt? Yes, she was badly burned over her arms and body. She suffered horribly. She thought she was going to die. And that's when she began crying for her baby. Her baby? She wanted to see her child before she died. Well, couldn't that have been arranged? Yes, but her prison record doesn't contain any reference to a child. As a matter of fact, we found a number of discrepancies in her record, including the fact that her real name was never disclosed at the trial. Then she's not Mrs. Ginny Smith. No, her real name is Mrs. Tom Richardson. Well, Warden, what makes you think this is a matter for the public defender? Well, I've studied her record, and I've come to the conclusion that there's more to Ginny Smith's case than ever came out in the trial. Well, just what do you want me to do about this, Ginny Smith? Or Ginny Richardson? Oh, I, I just want you to have a talk with her. Then do whatever you think you ought to do. All right. Ginny, I want you to meet Mr. Bart Matthews, the public defender. Hello, Mrs. Smith. What does he want with me? He just wants to talk to you. It's the same as though you were discussing things with your private attorney. Everything you say will be held in the strictest confidence. Thank you, Warden. Listen to him, Ginny. All right, what do you want to talk to me about? I understand you have a young daughter. Yes. When did you see her last? About three years ago. Since you've been up here? No, I've been up here two years. I didn't see her for a whole year before that. Can you tell me why, Jenny? My husband and I were divorced. He got custody of the child. Tom Richardson, is that your husband's name? My ex-husband. I understand that none of this information appears in the records of your trial. I know. Well, you were represented by counsel. Why didn't he bring all of this out? He didn't know. I didn't tell him. Why didn't you cooperate with your attorney? Because it would have meant dragging my husband and... I didn't want to drag my baby into it. In other words, you chose not to cooperate with your attorney, is that it? That's right. Why? Why don't you leave me alone? I'm doing my time up here. Jenny, if you want to see your baby again, you must cooperate with me. Why did you hide your identity? Why didn't you allow your husband to come forward and testify in your behalf? Why, Jenny? Because I've caused him enough trouble already. The way our marriage broke up was all my fault. M Mr. Matthews, I was an alcoholic. I see. I had to leave. I had to go my own way. And then finally, I got so tired. I was so alone. All I cared about was a roof over my head. Some place to crawl in and rest. Yes, can I help you? Do you have a room? Yes, but I generally rent my rooms by the week or by the month. Uh, I'll take it for a week. Have any references? References? No. Oh, just thought I'd ask. No one has references anymore. All right, young woman, I'll 
show you what I have. Thank you. Don't thank me until you see if you like the room. My name's Mrs. Bassett. Oh, I'm sure I'll like it. What you say your name was? Smith. Mrs. Ginny Smith. Yeah, I've heard that one before. Well, Mrs. Bassett, don't you usually knock before entering a gentleman's room? Oh, excuse me, Mr. Redmond. Oh, this poor head of mine, these headaches. I don't know what they'll cause me to do next. Imagine not even remembering you changed rooms this morning. Will you forgive me? Sure, I'll forgive you. Uh, is this one of your new rumors? Yes, and her name's Mrs. Smith. I'll show her your old room. Mrs. Smith. Pleased to meet you, Mrs. Smith. Oh, this is more like it. My poor head, I'm getting more and more forgetful every day. You think it'll do? I, I beg your pardon? The room, I asked if you'd think it'll do. Oh, yes, Mrs. Bassett, it'll be just fine. I should think it would. This room even has a radio. That's more than most rooms have. You know, there's a shortage of good rooms in this neighborhood. I, I turn people away every day who are looking for rooms. Well, people have to have a roof over their heads. They can't sleep in the street. I run a respectable place, and I usually know something about the people I take in. A person can't be too careful these days. Well, you won't have to worry about me, Mrs. Bassett. Mm -hmm. Well, the rent's payable in advance, ten dollars. Do you want it all at once? All at once. All right, ten dollars. Well, that's fine. Did you say the name was Mrs. Smith? Yes, I did. <laughs> That's what they all say. They can't expect me to believe them, though. I may be old and sick, but I'm not blind. Well, whether you believe it or not, it is Mrs. Smith. Well, if you say you're married, young lady, I, I won't argue with you. It's your own business, not mine. I was married. I'm not now. Hmm. Divorced? Yes. I don't approve of divorce. I was married to the same man for 41 years. Mr. Bassett, he was a kind old gentleman. He was always so nice to me whenever I felt poorly. I say there's something wrong with a woman who can't hold on to a man. Mrs. Bassett, I'm sorry, but I'm so tired. Do you mind? Oh, excuse me. These awful headaches. Oh, so... Remember now, rules of the house. No men visitors and no drinking. Yes, Mrs. Bassett, I'll remember. we've been together. We even have music, Tom. Kathy should be talking by now. She's almost two years old. Oh, how I wish I could be together with you and Kathy again, Tom. As though nothing had ever happened. Nine o'clock and the night is still young. This is Hap Morton, your genial MC bringing you three hours of your favorite program, Moods of Happiness. A mood for dreams, a mood for love, as we approach the time of midnight. This is Hap Morton, bringing you the final quarter hour of your favorite Moods of Happiness.
going on? What... What are you doing here? Just a little social call. Miss Bennett, don't you like company? You get out. What do you want? Hey, hear the music? They're playing our song. How about a little dance, baby? No. Come on. You don't belong in here. You get out. But what's the matter? All I asked for was a little dance. Oh, you're lonely, aren't you? No, no, I'm not lonely. <laughs> don't you kid me, baby. Women who live in places like this, cold little furnished rooms, they're always lonely. Don't touch me. Leave me alone. You get out. You get out or I'll scream for help. Hey, we'll hear you. Old Lady Bassett? What do you think, Old Lady Bassett will help you? <laughs> Baby, you've already broken the first rule of the house. You might as well break the second. Oh, leave me alone, please. Please, oh, leave baby, me alone. A little kiss won't do any harm. Well. What are you doing in here, Mr. Redmond? Well, what's a guy gonna do when a lady invites him in? No, that's not true. He forced his way in here. I'm playing the radio at this hour of the night, me with my terrible headaches. And after all I said about not permitting liquor on the premises. No, he's lying. He's oh, lying. Oh, is he now? Now you'll be telling me this is your husband, the fine fellow. Give me that picture. Give me that picture. You didn't fool me then, and you don't fool me now. He never was your husband. <gasps> well, now look what you've done. But you will be doing the looking. Right this minute, you can start looking for another place. <laughs> What's wrong with her? The way she's lying there. She's not dead. She can't be dead. If she is, baby, you know who killed her. I didn't kill her. I didn't kill her. Remember, baby. This is your rap. It's all yours. According to the bill of particulars that resulted in your indictment for murder, you were charged with beating Mrs. Bassett to death. Oh, no, I didn't beat her. Well, in your intoxicated state, perhaps. No, I didn't beat her, Mr. Matthews. I remember that moment as if it were now. What about the liquor, Jenny? I haven't had one drop since that night. And I don't need to drink now, Mr. Matthews. What I've been through has cured me. I wish I could believe that, Jenny. You can believe that. You can. All I care about, Mr. Matthews, is seeing my little girl again. It's all I care about. This is what kept me alive after the accident. I, I prayed to stay alive so that I could see my baby again. Can you help me, Mr. Matthews? Can you help me? Please help me. I'll do what I can, Jenny. The first thing I did for Jenny was to locate her husband. Tom Richardson? Yes. I'm Bort Matthews, the public defender. What do you want to see me about? How is Kathy? Kathy? How do you know about Kathy? Is she all right? She's fine. She's taking her nap. And what's this all about? Recognize who that is? Where did you get this? Your wife, isn't it, Mr. Richardson? It's my ex-wife. We're divorced. Look, I don't know what your racket is, but... Uh, no racket, Mr. Richardson. As I told you, I'm the public defender. I'm sorry I didn't mean that. I'm just trying to say that I'm not interested in my ex-wife anymore. The whole chapter's over. Like a closed book. She doesn't have any claim on me. What about Kathy? She doesn't have any claim on Kathy either. I want to help your wife. My ex-wife. Well, you came to the wrong guy. I did all I could for her. If she got into some kind of trouble, that's, that's her own lookout, not mine. Don't you know what kind of trouble? I'm not interested. Every time I turned the other way, she was hitting the bottle. It's like some kind of sickness. She was so weak, she didn't know how to fight it. And then came that awful day. 
had thrown out all the liquor in the house, so Ginny got the habit of running down to the corner bar during the baby's nap. Only this time, she left a hot iron on the table, and the place caught fire. The cops found her in the bar. Was Kathy hurt? We got her out just in time. The judge put Ginny on probation. I filed for a divorce. Got custody of the child. Just about everything else I asked for. Including your wife's resignation from the human race, no doubt. All right, what else could I have done? You might have tried helping her. All right, what'd you say you were, the public defender? Okay, you help her. You don't seem to understand, Mr. Richardson. Do you have any idea where your wife is? No. For the past two years, she's occupied a cell in the women's penitentiary. What? What for? For murder. Not Ginny. Yes, Ginny. When did it happen? Why didn't she tell me about it? She didn't want to bring your name or Kathy's name into it. She stood trial as Ginny Smith. Murder. She was charged with beating her landlady to death. Oh, no. No, th that's wrong, Mr. Matthews. What's wrong? Well, Ginny couldn't beat anyone to death. She, she, she's not... She's the opposite type. She's a, a mouse. She's timid. I, that was all part of her weakness. Why she took to drink. So she wouldn't be afraid. Afraid of what? Maybe it's all my fault. I've been afraid to face it. I was a prisoner of war in Korea. I was captured the same week that Kathy was born. They held me for 11 months, including locking me up in a hole for 22 days. You don't get over the kind of treatment I had in a hurry. When I got back, I, I guess I didn't give Jenny much of a chance. She couldn't have done it, not Jenny. Mr. Matthews, isn't there anything we could do to help her? There is something you could do, Tom. Tomorrow's Sunday, visiting day at the prison. Why don't you go to see her and take Kathy along? It would really help her if she could see Kathy. We'll be up there, Mr. Matthews. Both Kathy and I. While Tom Richardson and Kathy were renewing their acquaintance with Kathy's mother, I went over the records of the case. It soon became evident that the key to the entire matter was the witness named Al Redmond, who was present in the room when the murder was committed, if it was a murder. We asked the police department to aid us in locating Mr. Al Redmond. Good morning, Mr. Matthews. Hello, Bill. Did you locate Redmond? I found him in another rooming house not three blocks from the scene of the crime. What are we waiting for? Let's go. Come in, the door's unlocked. What can I do for you boys? I'm Bart Matthews, the public defender. This is Bill Benton. Yeah? I don't need no defender today. You uh, guys mind if I go on shaving? No, go right ahead, Al. It's your skin. What do you mean by that crack? Do you remember the Jenny Smith trial? Yeah. What about it? Tell us what you saw, Al. What did you witness? Look, I don't have to tell you guys nothing. But I don't mind talking on the witness stand. Not afraid, are you, Al? What are you to be afraid of? Nothing, as far as I can see. What were you doing in that room, Al? Now listen, beat it, Buster, before I get rough. I wouldn't try it, Al. There's a witness. You wouldn't stand a chance in court. The way Jenny Smith didn't stand a chance when you pinned that rap on her. What do you mean, pinned it on her? I saw her do it with my own eyes. You certainly cried, Murder. Yeah, I sure did. And testified to that effect in court. Yeah, that's me, star witness. And saved your own skin. Look, what are you talking about? I tell you, I saw her do it with my own eyes. She come in and she yanked the old woman by the hair and yanked on it until the old woman fell on her face and died. How does she yank the old lady's hair, Al? How did she do it? What do you mean? Let's act it out. Sort of reenact the crime. Now, uh, did she come up on her like this? Yeah, in a way. And then did she go like this? Yeah. 
And then did she do this? What's the big idea? Cut it out, will you? What's the big idea? Just check it, Al. You're still on your feet. You didn't fall down and die. Yeah, I'm a healthy big guy. Not a sick old woman with headaches all the time. Wait a minute. Did you say that Mrs. Bassett was a sick woman? That's right. She always complaining, always running off to the doctor. You wouldn't happen to remember the name of the doctor, would you? Look, how would I remember the doctor? Well, we'll find it. You just make sure you're around in case we need you. Yes, we may have to call the star witness back to the stand again. All right, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll be around. I'll play ball. We ran down Mrs. Bassett's physician, a Dr. Silas Morgan, only to find that he too had died shortly before the trial. I called the physician's credit bureau and found that Dr. Morgan's practice had been taken over by a Dr. James Pollard. Did you destroy those records, Dr. Pollard? Destroy them? No, I destroy them. I just transferred them up to the attic to give us a little more room down here. Why, is there anything wrong? No, nothing now. Uh, do you mind if we look around your attic? No, the place is yours, if you don't mind the dust. <laughs> Not at all. There was no system, no order to any of it. We went through an accumulation of 40 years of medical practice, thousands of cases of individual reports and histories, until we found what we were looking for. There's no question about it, Mr. Matthews. These encephalographic findings definitely indicate an advanced and progressively worsening condition of hardening of the arteries in the brain. Could you say how serious it was, Doctor? Serious enough to corroborate Dr. Morgan's written opinion that Mrs. Bassett had a life expectancy of only a few months, that any form of excitement would cause instantaneous death. Would you be willing to make a sworn statement to that effect? A great deal depends upon it, Doctor. In that case, I would. Thanks. With Dr. Pollard's medical testimony and the evidence of Dr. Morgan's records to support us, we prepared a petition for a pardon which was presented to the governor of the state. The governor granted the pardon. Forget what you've done for us. Never as long as we live. Well, can I drive you home? No, I have my car. Besides, we have a stop to make. The Marriage License Bureau. As you just saw, Jenny Smith, or rather Virginia Richardson, is now reunited with a husband and daughter who will someday forget that they were ever apart. And so a woman who was once forgotten by the whole world has now found her place in that world again. We congratulate public defender James D. Cosgrove and his staff for outstanding achievement in the cause of justice.